guys, it's Holly and today I wanted to take a look at one of my favourite sets from the 2004 Wave of Lego Harry Potter sets and that is the original Shrieking Shack. Now this is set 4756 and retailed back in the day for 50 US dollars which these days inflation accounted for would cost around 76 to 80 US dollars. However, on the aftermarket, if you wanted to buy this set used, it will set you back around 180 with of course new being more. For myself, I paid around like 250 Australian dollars for this set, which is definitely a lot and almost twice the price of the remade version, which is a bit ridiculous. <laughs> And because of when this set initially released, the movie wasn't out yet, so this set, unlike the newer version, would have been based off a bunch of concept art, probably some like production design images as well. So there are some, I guess, notable things that I think differ from the film sort of looking back, but I'm really excited to get into this set, so let's go and have a look at it. So here is the Shrieking Shack all built up and overall I think this is a really interesting set with a lot of really interesting parts and pieces especially for 2004 but it was also incredibly limited and I guess a tiny bit lackluster as a result but before we really take a look at the build let's have a look at the minifigures. First up in the set, of course, we have Harry Potter, and I was a really big fan of, like, these original Harry Potter faces in, like, the flesh tone. They're just really nostalgic for me, and I'm not entirely sure why, considering I didn't really own any of them until later in my adult life, but this Harry Potter minifigure overall looks pretty good, especially considering, like, this set would have been based off of, like, concept art and images and things like that. The fact that they still, like, I guess had, like, a basic Harry Potter t-shirt with a jacket on top of it was really cool, and even, like, sort of looking back these days like we still use dark tan for his pants from this particular scene which I think is really cool I guess looking back and seeing how accurate this would have been in the future. Besides that though there is no alternate face on Harry and no back printing either. It wasn't really a thing too much back then so I'm not really surprised. Next up is Sirius Black, and he only featured in two sets, one of which being the Shrieking Shack, and overall I really loved his torso design. I think it's perfect and really accurately represents Sirius Black. His hair, I mean, it was a pretty accurate headpiece choice considering the choices at the time, but definitely does not look great looking at him these days. His face print as well is really neat, and overall I think this is a pretty good figure given the time and I guess piece and printing restraints of 2004. One of the most impressive yet also really inaccurate minifigures from this set is Peter Pettigrew. I am really impressed with this minifigure. I've always seen tons of photos from him and was always just incredibly curious to how the head print works and I'm actually pleasantly surprised. The fact that they managed to get all of this like super weird hair printing like on the top of his head is really fascinating and I think just works really well. Now while it's not really accurate to Peter Pettigrew's I guess like mullet that he had in this scene, it definitely gives him like a very creepy and sinister and just like really rat-like appearance which I love to see especially on this figure. His suit jacket as well it does look a little bit tatty I mean for Peter Pettigrew I would have expected a little bit more but then again I'm not entirely sure like how much of this character they would have seen before the production of this minifigure but overall that face print is just amazing and he was exclusive to this set as well. And lastly is Professor Lupin, which is by far the minifigure that I am most excited for with this set. And I am really impressed. He comes with this dark bluish gray cape, which I guess this version just, it's pretty good condition, but also still looks like a little worn out. But overall, I really loved the color of the suit. I loved the dark green. I mean, it's not something, again, that I really like remember from the Prisoner of Azkaban. However, I think the dark green works really well with his ginger hair, which I think that hairpiece worked incredibly well. But my favorite thing about this Lupin minifigure has always been that head print. The fact that you've got sort of like the werewolf scratches on his face, I think is fantastic. It was something that I didn't really understand understand when I was younger but then as I sort of grew up and looked back at this minifigure I really realized I guess how cool that was to have on a minifigure especially back in 2004 but another great thing about this figure in particular rather than the one from the Boggart classroom is that it comes along with a little werewolf head so you can stick it on top of Professor Lupin and have his werewolf version which this werewolf head definitely not the most accurate or great looking piece however I love the fact that it was dark bluish gray I personally think that's a lot more accurate to Werewolf Lupin, but also the fact that they did include it in general I think was amazing and really added a lot to this set back then, and I have always wanted this minifigure so he's a very welcome addition to my collection. 
So this set really has like three major components to it. Firstly, you've got the Shrieking Shack itself, then you've got the side build of Honeydukes, but you also have this little shed which serves as a pretty neat play feature, so let's start with that. Now this shed to me is super interesting because this entire thing, besides like these top slope pieces and these two 1x4 bricks and like this owl, everything here is one piece. It's got some like special molding on the outside to give it a bit of detail. You've got some bricks, you've got some wooden panels, even some windows that look exactly the same as the Lego windows, which I love. You just would not get a piece like this these days. I think it's so interesting, so unique, and also is very, very fat and has a nice big Lego logo on the top. So the whole purpose of this is that you could put like Sirius Black or like the werewolf in here, and even the Grim. You would press down on this little like gray piece at the top, and when you would lift it up you would have an entirely different character down below or they'd sort of like disappear which I guess like the whole point of this was to sort of show how serious Black has been sneaking around as if I put him here and put the little thing on the top if I can actually line this up correctly there we go press this little button and he sort of just disappears and now he's stuck in here so I'd have to press it again in order to get serious Black out. I mean it's definitely a very interesting piece. I don't think Lego really needed to mold anything like this to in order to do it. However, I think that that's incredibly cool and I guess just again really states like this was 2004. Like we would make really random molds like this. I don't even think that this piece came in any other set so it's really interesting and honestly makes kind of a good backdrop for the rest of this set. Next up is the build for Honey Dukes, and to be completely honest, I thought this was just like one big strip of a build, but turns out this thing actually can fold in on itself, but it sort of gives you this really weird, I guess, like giant open wall thing. Whereas I guess if you sort of like turn it around from a bunch of different directions, it looks a bit more, I guess, like a complete store. I actually kind of like the fact that they've added like a ton of, I guess, gateways and alleyways. But yeah, I just, I found that really strange that it actually like folded and contracted. That's something I definitely didn't expect just when looking of photos and overall I think Honey Dukes is actually really interesting. Firstly I love these printed glass panels. I think these are fantastic and I wish that that is something that you would see more often today. I love the print for them. They are fantastic as well as these printed lollipop pieces. I thought that was a really nice touch but also the fact that they tried to decorate it out in snow and really create that sort of like snowy winter landscape that you see in the Prisoner of Azkaban by having a bunch of slope pieces on the top as well as just sort of like at the base and the bottom to make it look like a nice winter village. On the left hand side they have these two little lamp post builds which are pretty simple and unfortunately as well because of the way the thing's built on the inside you sort of have a bit of inconsistency when it comes to the exterior colours. For the most part it is like this dark orange and reddish brown however you sort of got a little bit of grey seeping through here but overall it's nothing too major and sort of gives a little shelf as well which I definitely don't think was necessary or needed per se but I guess it gives you more space to add a bunch of like shop items. Items. On the inside as well there is this printed till piece which definitely gives me I guess sort of like a magical world feel rather than like a regular till which I thought was really interesting and I guess it really just comes down to all of the corner detailing as well as this little golden space bar at the bottom. As you move things around as well there are some lollipops, you've also got some little potions as well as this little basket and you can actually as well sort of lift this entire thing up to sort of expose the one-eyed witch passage which I think is really cool and ties in nicely as well to the one-eyed which passage set which is a pretty neat feature there's also some little panel pieces over here but overall this build for honey jukes is pretty simple but honestly a really nice and welcome side build addition i think and as well ties into other scenes of the film which i think is really important for a set like this then lastly is the main attraction, which of course is the Shrieking Shack. And honestly, considering the piece count being like in the low 400s, like this build is considerably tall and actually a lot bigger than I guess I thought. However, when you sort of turn it around on the inside, you can see, I guess, why that is the case because the interior is super empty. But for what the shack is, especially from the exterior, I think it is fantastic. Now do keep in mind there is one piece that I did have to swap the color out of because I did buy this set used and there was one piece missing which is this one here. It is the same piece. However, the only color I had in my collection was this dark brown, so this is supposed to be black. Besides that, this set is exactly as it came in 2004. And one thing I actually really like about this model is the fact that the entire, I guess, top section can rotate around. Now, I feel like that's just in order to make it look, I guess, a bit twisted, but I guess you could also have it so that you've got these extra steps here, and then, like, I guess a more of, like, a flat facade when you sort of lean it that way. But I love the fact you can have it at a little bit of an angle 
single. Besides that though, there isn't a lot of, I guess, like twist and shriek and sort of like cro crookedness, I guess, in terms of the Shrieking Shack. But I think it's a pretty neat feature and also it's just like this rotating piece. Luckily you can't really see that it is bright blue from the actual model itself, but I think it's pretty sick. Before we talk about the interior, I really want to touch on the exterior as this thing, I guess, just looks incredibly flat. I don't think that dark brown was a colour at this point, so I understand why the entire thing is reddish brown, but I really wish that there was a little bit more colour variation, like for the windows for instance. I felt like they would have been better if they were black. That being said, I don't think it makes a serious difference to the look of the set. The fireplace as well does look pretty neat, however I do wish that these tan pieces weren't visible, but it's nothing overall, I guess, like too major. I love the fact that we had some printed panels that are all at various angles as well. The skeleton on the side is a pretty neat touch as well and I loved those sort of like old style skeleton heads. Also the fact that it was sort of built up on this base I found a little interesting. I mean at the end of the day I think it's purely for that little twisting feature but besides that I think the exterior really well matches the design of the house. Now with this design as well, like I said, it is very flat both in terms of I guess colour scheme as well as build. Like there's really not a lot of depth to it besides this window pane at the top. There's a couple of little sloped pieces in order to make I guess some archways and especially at the roof. But besides that the entire thing is just very flat, like there's some angles in the corners, again using some slope pieces. But just from the front, like there's really not a lot going on. Now when you turn the set around there are two layers here, starting off we've got the little basement thing which we really didn't see too much of in the movie so it's interesting to see what they've done here. Firstly there's this little table with a printed I guess just like magic tile here with some little stars on them and that's really about it. There's also like this printed little book piece here which this table as well can fold up I guess so you can hide some things or I guess like put some extra pieces in or something like that. But yeah there's just this little really tiny small book tile on the top which I don't really think adds much to the set but because it was an old set it's a printed piece so that is very welcome. Now the fireplace is pretty neat and really doesn't have a lot going on besides the fact that you can use it and swing it open I guess in order for Sirius and everyone who's sort of coming through the Whomping Willow to get through. Like I can just throw Harry in here and that's sort of his entrance into the Shrieking Shack. You can also open it really easily by using this little piece here. I guess it acts as a handle. Overall I thought that was pretty neat and I'm glad that they did incorporate some play features into this set. Overall it's pretty neat and I'm glad that they were able to do it because it just adds some much needed play features to this section of the set. Then next up we have the second level. There's really not a lot in the roof. It's really just this big hollow empty thing with I guess the support beam in order to make it a little bit stronger. But besides that all you've got is the second floor here where the fireplace does continue up with a single one of those frames. And besides that all you get is this bed as well as bedside table. The room's pretty bare bones but there was a bed in the movie which served as a pretty big I guess like feature or I guess like set piece of the scene that I remember and that is where Harry casts Snape into the bed and the entire thing breaks which they did actually sort of replicate here as if you pull out this skeleton piece which I showed from the exterior the entire bed will fall down and a character can go flying onto the base level. I mean Snape wasn't included in this set so I guess you can't really replicate it all too well but I thought that was a really neat feature. Besides that though the bed's a bit plain. I would have loved if there was like a printed pillow tile or bed sheets instead of having, you know, that little tiny printed book and like spell piece here. But otherwise, I mean, this room, it does, I guess, what it needs to. There's enough space for you to like sort of play with it like a dollhouse, but there's really not a lot going on here. And I think that's very reflective as well, I guess, of the piece count of the set. Overall, I think this set is incredibly unique. I just you would not see a set like that happen these days, especially with a giant specially molded transformation piece like that shed. Like that just is would never happen today. I also love the fact that I guess just like the remake, we had a little side build of the side. I think Honey Juice was an interesting choice, but honestly, considering the rest of the lineup from that year, I think it absolutely makes sense. And considering how limited, I guess, the piece choices were and like printing budgets and everything like that back in 2004. The way that the Shrieking Shack turned out I think is amazing and the fact as well that the design is relatively similar to the one that we've gotten today in 2022 is really I guess a statement to how well done this set was for back when it was made. 
I think these days definitely it is very lacklustre in a lot of different ways. I think the characters and the minifigures are amazing. There are some really interesting prints and pieces and I love the fact that there are no stickers as well. It is fantastic. However, it definitely, definitely is lacking a lot of detail and is very inaccurate, I guess, sort of looking back at it now. That being said, it's like this would have been made off concept art, so I don't expect things like Honey Jukes, I guess, to be like super accurate or things like that. However, I think that this set still is a pretty solid one looking back today. I mean, if you're a big fan of the Prisoner of Azkaban like I am, I would definitely suggest this set. I mean, it's amazing. It just is definitely a lot of money being an old one and being retired. However, this has always been a set that I have wanted and been looking after. So the fact that I now have it in my collection makes me incredibly happy and I, I love how nostalgic this is as well. That being said, this set I think is getting just a little bit too expensive, I guess, to go out and say, yeah, like go and buy this old set. That being said, I had a lot of fun building this set and I'm really glad to have it in my collection. So let me know your thoughts on this set and all of the minifigures and good old 2004 building down in the comments below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below. And until next time, I'll see you later.